welcome to a very exciting show, The Connected Home. We're uh, going to tackle two very relevant and timely topics tonight with the panel discussion, home ownership and technology. And I'm surrounded by some very uh, big industry experts, I would call them. I'm going to start to my left with Dwayne Davis, C uh, cost, um, Chief Information Officer, Thanks, Matt. Cable Bahamas here. Group. Good to be and here. Uh, also we have Minister Joe Beth Covey Davis. Thank you. MP Elizabeth and also Minister of Transport and Housing. And to my right, we have Fran and Wilson, Chairman, Iraq Homes. And we have Matt Sweeting. And I like to call you the social media realtor. <laughs> Very exciting guy, but he's CEO of um, One Oak. All right. And uh, this is, the, this is um, also too, we have uh, Crystal. We have Crystal Martin, who's joining us remotely from Aero, one of our partners. So we, we have also, we have some giveaways. We're gonna do a lot tonight. We're gonna to talk and we're gonna give away a lot of Rev services free. So we are giving away tonight to our five first uh, guests to enter the webinar. We're giving you one month free Rev services. Wow. So congratulations to those, to those winners. I'm sure the team is identifying them and we'll, uh, we'll call your names in a bit. So we, we wanna jump right into the discussion. Uh, and I, I would like to start with the minister. You said something, um, I think it was in the House of Assembly recently. You said one of the greatest acts of forms of human empowerment was home ownership. It is. If you don't mind, can you expand on that a bit for us? It is. I mean, home ownership allows for a certain wealth to be created into a home. It um, is an accumulation of assets for families that leads into another level of empowerment for people, you know, they own, now they own a piece of the rock, as Bahamians would like to say. And, and at, in many instances, you could draw from person's stories to say, well, this is what home ownership did for them. But I am an example of what a good governing home ownership policy does for a family, because my parents, under the age of 30, were also recipients of the Elizabeth Estates subdivision. They got their first home from the government in Elizabeth Estates at, uh, in about 87. So I was about two years old when they became homeowners. And um, what that did for them at the age of 30 is that brought them into another wealth category because now they have something as collateral that they can take to the bank. So then they can borrow and build a small business or they can borrow in and send their children off to school. And you know it expands how they see themselves in society, so. And general and generation wealth. Yes, That's generation, exactly, yes. correct. Sometimes it's not necessarily for, for us or this generation, mm -hmm. it's for the future generations <laughs> correct. and the correct. beginning of that, yes. Correct. And, uh, and I know there's you know, something I wanna ask you directly from the seat that you sit in. Sometimes there's this raging debate, cost of real estate, uh, you know, the government needs to do something. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk a lot directly. First of all, can, is the government involved in the price of real estate? Can the government do anything about the price of real estate or is that more driven by market forces? The market forces is what really drives it. And um, what you see right now is a uh, driving demand it's an extreme demand out there. Um, it's quite overwhelming, especially for me. And I'm sure Matt is seeing it right now. What you have is we were locked down for two years. Persons are now, the economy is opening up. And so persons are now in a state where I haven't been able to do certain things for two years. So I need to get out there and probably get this done as fast as possible. Home ownership or homeowners, interested homeowners are having the same response. Well, I haven't been able to access this. Yes. And, and now that there's a potential opportunity, I'm going to go out. After it. So the government doesn't technically try to get involved too much in, in directing the, the market on how to price. Um, so that is why you have an affordable housing program that's offered by the government, because there is a cap to one oak and say, hey, I have this amount of money and, and this is what I want to buy. You have category of people that can do that. But for those who cannot, you have programs that government offer and they take control and they partner with persons like ROAC to provide affordable housing. And I like to use affordable housing because I want people to understand that they're getting quality products. It's not low cost because we're not building cheaply. We're just building on government-owned land 
And so I can di dictate the price of the home because I decide whether or not I price the land at market value or I just price it a little bit just to gain my infrastructural costs. And that's what happens in the ministry. All right. So, and if I was someone who's interested in wanting to take advantage of some of those opportunities mm -hmm. with the government, how would I go about doing that? Well, the Department of Housing would be your first stop. Um, just for you to gain information. Um, but now we've created a website. And so on our department, I have to look at and, and remind myself what the website is because it's new. Yeah, yeah. Fun. So we created a website and it has an application attached to it. It tells you exactly what all you would need, your documentation. It's usually the same requirements that the bank would ask you because we partner with um, Mortgage Corp, which falls under, is connected to the ministry, or you can bring your own bank, um, commercial bank, who would provide a mortgage. And so so we provide the list of documents you need to, to bring in and show us what bracket of qualification you fall in. And then we try to assist with placing you into a home. Excellent. I want to jump over to Matt. Matt. You didn't say the website. The website? Oh, oh, no, the website know. is www.mothbahamas.com. And that's where you can go on and check out all the information about housing. Using technology. Yes, correct. <laughs> Matt, the industry that you're in, uh, the minister alluded to sometimes challenged and uh, to access to uh, certain price ranges of real estate. It's, it, we know it's real out there. A lot of people complain about that. They make comments about it. From the vantage point that you're in, are we challenged? Are we being, are, are everyday Bahamians being priced out of the real estate market? Or is that a misconception? And there's some options out there. No, there, there are some options, and I think I think it's yes to both, right? Mm -hmm. And so there are some challenges. I think um, the the proposed housing community and prospect and the result of that, the fifteen hundred mm -hmm. people that were, you know, kind of left. Mm -hmm. What that was indicative of is the demand for this marginalized demographic, yeah. right? And those people that that was attempting to address, people between the ages of 18 to 40, uh, that younger demographic, we're priced out of the market. It is very, very challenging for that demographic to afford real estate in this day and age. What but, are some of the things that you're doing? Yeah, because you're yeah. a pre pre creative guy. I don't know if people see that, but you're the TikTok master. Yep, yep. I love it, but what you do is you, you give people a real-time preview of, yep. the, of the homes and the, yeah. the real estate that you're offering. Yeah, and so the opportunities that we've found out there is in repossessions, right? And mm -hmm. and and one of the, the, the bittersweet uh, uh, elements of this market is repossession, right? Mm -hmm. It's a sad story for some, but on the next, on the flip side, it's an opportunity for others. Right. And that has created an opportunity for a number of people who to get their first piece of real estate. You know, we got a client right now who ended up buying a repossessed property for 130,000. He's going to put somewhere to the tune about 40,000 into it. Uh, I just did a walkthrough of that property. And, and after it's all said and done, that property will be valued somewhere to a tune of about 250. Mm. And so again, he immediately has equity in it. Yeah. This is someone, yeah. again, that would fall in that marginalized category. Uh, him and I are in set in our mid thirties. And so outside of an opportunity like that, if he would have been hard pressed to buy something at 300,000 or in that neighborhood. Yeah. So what's the future looking like for the younger folks, the millennials who are really generating the demand right now. Yeah. So we, we think that the move for them is either going to be to create supplemental income, right? Mm -hmm. This is the, the breakthrough to affording real estate in this market or seriously looking at alternative markets to heavily invest in. Uh, that they could be income generating properties yeah. to support maybe a higher end rental yeah. or something here on the island. Are you seeing more people just side with renting? Just throwing their hands up this isn't for me, I can't do it, I can't achieve, I can't generate the type of funds needed to get into the own real estate ownership market, I'm gonna rent? Yeah. Long-term, that is. Yeah, and, and I, I think it's by consequence and not by choice, right? But Bahamians are generally ambitious people. We want our own property and proud as well, right? And so we have a strong desire to own our own real estate and own our, our piece of the rock. But unfortunately, the market or our own circumstances have not allowed us to do so. And so people still strongly have the ambition. One thing that we've been advocating for is that people understand the process about buying real estate. How much money do I need down? How do I need to be banking if I'm self-employed so that the bank can look at me as a, as a responsible borrower? Um, and things like that. You need to become educated about the market to understand how am I going to achieve the obstacles that are presented to this younger demographic? No, I understand. I understand. 
Brandon, we've heard from the minister, we've heard from Matt from the real estate market. Our Rock Homes has been bridging the gap and helping Bahamians realize their dream of home ownership for a very long time. Tell us about that. Um, well, for Our Rock, it's really exciting. Our Rock Homes started building a property outside of Pineville Gardens, and I think it was about 1993 or four. And from then we started building homes, uh, remember in Seabury's, Winton, Twynham, um, and over the years. And so today, basically we're building literally all over the island. And so um, today we have properties and we're offering literally in the east and the west and all over the place. And so one of the things that we have done is basically we have broadened who we build for and the, the level of homes. So homes could start at one particular area. So if someone says, hey, I need a two bed, one bath, we have something for you. If someone says, I need a three bed, two bath, just we have something for you. If someone says, look, I'm a little more, I'm a little more particular. I have a little, I want a different area or something. I want something in the West or this or that. We have something for you. So uh, the, there are ways and there are ways in which for a lot of people, home ownership is possible and it is still possible. And so the, if, especially if you're young and have time, the fact of the matter is there's no need to be, feel disenfranchised at all. There's a pathway for you. And so if you're doing it, hey, it may mean, it may mean, hey, look, let me go get the vacant property first and then eventually get my home. It, that may have to happen. Or maybe another way, look, I'm going to get all at the same time, depending on my income. But there's a pathway to do it. And so um, for people, there's the private sector can afford people the opportunity to still own a home wherever you want in Nassau. And so there's no... People could do it. And so whether people are getting a home to say, look, I need a home assistance from the government of the Bahamas, or need the private sector to help me, whatever spectrum you're on, it can be done. I, I want to make a key, dis key distinction here with mm -hmm. the point that the minister made. She mentioned affordable housing, That's affordable right. homes, affordable housing. That doesn't necessarily mean lesser quality. Absolutely. As a developer, yeah. talk us through a lot of people may have the misconception. Yeah, right. If I live here, or if I buy here, or if I go to you're this right. company, you're right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting subpar. You're right. Material you're process right. yeah, construction. Yeah. I could tell Speak you, to us about that. I could tell you for our rock. I could tell you we um our standard at our rock is such where some people call and they say, "Hey, what's the price per square foot? What's the price per square foot?" And years ago, we stopped telling people, "Look, we don't deal with that," because at the end of the day, if you want the look, if you the game is you want the lowest price per square foot then no problem. If that's the answer, then the easiest way to do it is use the cheapest materials to bring down the cost, if that was the goal. But the reason why we don't get into that is because, listen, we use mowing fixtures. We use this, get our cabinets from wherever, bring it, fly them in and all that kind of stuff. We don't deal with that because at the end of the day, we give you the quality. And so the quality is what you really want. And so um, is the cheaper materials out there? Absolutely. But cheaper things lead to callbacks. This isn't working, all that kind of stuff which we don't, want, we don't want to deal with. So it's cheaper we get the quality stuff one time, give you your home and sing happy new home to you and wish you the, and, and see, you when, see you when we see you, to be happy for you. Mm -hmm. Brandon, tell us real quick about the phased approach. Mm -hmm. You said, I can, I can start working on a part of the process now. That's right. I can complete that, I can move on to the next. Opposed right. to coming in and saying, okay, I already did a whole ship buying. If Talk you're... us through that phased approach because that may be more realistic based off of what, particularly what Matt said, the reality of a lot of folks out there. Exactly, so a lot of people, it's a case of, hey, look, and we're doing it now. So our Rock Homes, um, for the last two years, two or three years ago, we started selling vacant lots again. And the demand for that actually caught us by surprise. And so a lot of people, it's like, hey, for whatever reason, I'm self-employed, I am this or that, and the, getting a home, Right now, I'm too, I hadn't been working long enough, whatever, but a lot I could get by myself. And so I could get a lot, or if I'm married, I could get a lot, and we start paying on that lot. And then I could build either as we go, or I could pay it down a little bit enough just to get the whole package. But the main thing is you could start on the journey. So whether it's, hey, look, we're starting because whatever we are, we could get this thing in phases and start with the property and this just to get it. Or I, like I said, I, I want to live a West where we have property. I want to live in this particular part of town. No problem. You can start paying on the property and then build a home. And so those are, those are pathways in which people can do it. It does not have to be, hey, I can't move until I have this much down, this or that. The main thing is create pathways and opportunities for people to do it. And once you, once you create a pathway, 
it's like the gym. You got to stay committed to yeah. it. And once yeah. you stay committed to it, yeah. you can see the results. And, and I hope a lot of people out there realize that there's options. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. But we, we're, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back to jump into some of the technology stuff with Dwayne. Yeah, commercial. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Connected Home panel discussion. So Fran, I don't know if you remember one of the first things you came in is you commented on the transformation of the space. Absolutely. So it'd be remiss of me not to thank Bahamas Design Center for making, creating this transformation. Yeah. They staged the room for us. It's a beautiful scenery. Okay. So please visit them at any of the three locations to take a look at some of these items and many, many more. Dwayne. Hey. Connected Home. Smart home. Some of these, well, some, the, some of these things have been catchphrases yeah. for a very long yeah. time. Five, ten years ago, you would you'd hear them, but the time is now. What's a connected home? What's a smart home? Well, once you would have gotten your home from either the ministry, our home, or through Better Sweeting, you want to get connected. And a connected home is basically connecting to services rev offer, such as internet, voice, and TV. And by connecting that home. It then allows you access to all of the trends and all of the technologies out there. A smart home is that once you would have connected, you would then use that connectivity to make your home smart. Smart homes include turning lights off and on. All of, uh, many of us know about Alexa, do this, or Alexa, do that. And for me, it's not a sales pitch. I personally use the Eero product in my house, right? And it creates a good mesh. I've gone through the links, I've gone through all of those, but in a connected home, the Eero device allows that customer to control all of their and fully utilize their Wi-Fi services. For an example, you have a doorbell. You can tie in your doorbell. You can tie in your lights. You can now tie in the brand new Samsung refrigerators. 
if you're coming home late at night, you're a female, because you know, the thing is, I always, I, I always tell my wife, when you're coming home, make sure you have your purse and your keys in your hands, because they get, they tend to stop home and they dig in the car. In the front of my home, I have the, I have a, a, the, the spotlight. So the minute you bang around the corner and see you, it lights up. And that, that, that comes to your phone. I've been to your house, you got like yeah. 20 cameras on top of that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it comes to your phone and, and you can actually see what's going on. Also, when you're out, you can monitor your home as well too remotely. Uh, for example, no matter where you are in the world, as long as you're connected, you're good to go. So that's what's, that's what's a connected home. A connected home is getting the services and the smart home is using that service to make your home well, a lot well, more. Well, relative to connected homes, we know what the pandemic did, Dwayne. Oh with God, all yeah. of us, all of us, all of us, the need for not only rock solid internet connectivity, but the coverage all around our home, right? Wi-Fi connectivity. I wanted everyone in the bathroom, the back porch, is because from the work from home and the uh, school from home orders, that transformed the way we look at and we interact with Wi-Fi and connectivity. Well, one thing the pandemic taught us at Cable Bahamas and Alive is be ready. Because as you know, the very next day, the Prime Minister shut down two years ago, Everybody's online. That's it. And you remember literally the thing, happened literally overnight. Literally happened overnight. And you know we were teetering, and we did upgrades and upgrades and upgrades. What the pandemic did was made cable was made Rev and Alive a lot smarter at the way we deliver service. Because of the demand for the service, we were able to find products at Eero. Like for example, I talk with Eero. I have three Eros in my house, right? And that creates the mess. It's important for persons to know that the coverage in your home does not depend on the device. It depends on the size of your home to determine how many devices you need. And the construction of your home. And the construction of your we home. We use concrete blocks in the Bahamas. We use concrete. Some of these homes exactly. have six, eight inch interior walls. Exactly, right? And, and Wi-Fi don't go through walls. No. They'll tend to go around and try cool. to find the easiest best example, right? Yeah. Also, a lot of persons, I remember, you know, it's a big thing about extenders. Eero have an extender. But what you do is when you first set that era device up next to the internet connection, you then sync the other boxes. And what you do is as you go, you plug in and that creates another circle, another circle, right? What we call a uh, mesh. So Dwayne, I know you believe you're the aero expert. We are, but we actually have an aero expert on the line joining us from That's better than me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure Crystal is yeah, better than me. Yeah. Uh, so we have Crystal Martin, who is uh, the success manager at Eero. Crystal, are you with us? I am. I feel like you took my thunder a little bit. No, no, no. Don't worry about Dwayne. Perfectly. <laughs> so, so, Crystal, tell us a bit about Eero because it, it's it's something that's offered by Rev now, and it has transformed a lot of the internet experience in, in the homes that we and our customers that we use. I think three or four persons on the panel confirmed that they actually already have it in their home, so a nice plug for you. But tell us about Eero and, and Wi-Fi connectivity. Yeah, definitely. So um, as Wayne had explained, that Eero really helps with the amount of um, Eros that are in your home. So as opposed to just a regular router that's in your home, think of it as kind of like a, um, a lighthouse, right? A lighthouse is on the water. It The beam of light reaches just so far. Think of that as your traditional router. And for Eero, think of Eero as buoys in, buoys in the water to where the light is spread throughout the ocean, right? And so with Eero, you're able to um, get more connectivity and more Wi-Fi coverage in a given space. Um, and so because of that, it just helps that uh, you don't lose connectivity if someone's streaming um, a video or if they're watching a TikTok or if they're monitoring their baby um, via a smart home um, system. And so that's why uh, the power of Eero is so perfect and wonderful for any home size. Uh, they reach, um, if you have two devices, it reaches over uh, 3,500 square feet. And the more arrows you uh, have in your space, it can uh, cover that space without any dead zones. I know we've been in houses where it's like, oh, my Wi-Fi is not good in this part of the house. Let me move to another part of the house. Um, well, with, well, Crystal, uh, I'll just say something real quick. Unfortunately, they, most people wouldn't say my Wi-Fi is not good. They're going to say my internet is not good. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why this is such an important partnership with us for, for Capable Harvest and Rev and Eero, because at the end of the day, we want to improve the customer's internet experience, period, whether it's directly off of their modem or it's Wi-Fi in the back, or back bedroom of their home because they're, they're, their child is having to do Zoom classes. Absolutely, which is so important. Um, you never want to miss a beat with school or work. Um, or if you're remotely managing your house through smartphone, where 
Um, you don't want that Wi-Fi coverage to be dead if you're trying to see who's at your door, who's ringing the doorbell when you might be out somewhere else. Um, coverage is so important in our homes nowadays because it's Wi-Fi is basically the air um, that we pretty much breathe at this point. Um, yeah. In this point, it's and the fact of the matter is, most devices nowadays they they don't have wires. They don't even have a port for a wire anymore. Every, everything is is wireless in the home, right? So that connectivity is really important. And, and one of the, I think, in my opinion, one of the most valuable assets of your product. It's so easy to install, right? It's really customer self install. Could you walk us through that that process real quick, please? Yeah, definitely. Um, so through um, Eero, you have a support team backing you just in case you're not a Wi-Fi whiz and you need some support as well. But through the power of the app, it goes through a few simple steps and you're able to connect all your devices. You're able to block ads if you need to. Um, and also you're just able to um, manage your Wi-Fi and data usage. Some things take more usage than others. And so you can see that in real time through our app as well. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of management and, and self-empowering tools. I love it. So I want to jump back to Dwayne. Dwayne, as we when we get into connected homes and smart homes, bandwidth consumption, how much I need, um, the stability of the internet, all that becomes very fundamental to being able to deliver a smart home. Is that something that Rev can do? Yeah, definitely. Well, one of the biggest complaints you get is that my internet's slow, but I pay for the entry package. The speed of the internet is going to, the performance of the internet in your home is going to be determined by how many devices you have attached to that particular service. For example, streaming is huge. We all use Netflix, we all use Peacock or whatever, and we all want the internet. But the more devices that's attached, the more the slower that service is going to be within your home. So don't assume that, oh, I have this, but yet it's buffering, it's buffering, it's buffering as well. As an example, the average home probably runs about 36 connected devices at any given time. The average home? The average home, right? And that's anyone, just remember that's your tablet, yeah. that's your cell phone, some of us have two cell phones. That's your, that could be air conditioned, that could be a smart TV, you have multiple smart TVs, that's your laptop, that is that toaster oven you just bought, everything in your home that has Wi Fi, that's your camera system, that's your alarm system, all of them are fighting for bandwidth. She mentioned the ERA app. The good thing with the ERA app is that you can log in, you can see all the devices that are attached, and it lets you know the strain of the connectivity within your house. Also in the ERA app, you can do a speed test. It also tells you the, how fast your internet is. Right? Speaking of ERA, mm -hmm. if I'm watching right now, how can I get it in my home from Easy. Rev? Just call Rev, just dial, just dial 611, right? And they'll come out and they'll sign you up. There's also the triple play, which is the voice, the data, and the television services. So it's that easy. Right, it is really, really that easy. Yeah. I want to ask the uh, minister a question. Yep. Uh, how, how is the government, as you guys move into uh, providing access to home ownership, right? How is the government incorporating technology into those homes? Well, we speak to packages, right? Because it's important for us to, a part of creating the affordable housing platform is also providing some business connection yep. through to businesses like yourself, Rev that is present here in the Bahamas. And so we offer opportunities for companies like yourself to send package priced already, and we can offer them back to homeowners where we encourage them to expand once they've already signed into being the homeowner and issuing them their lot and they know for certain that that's theirs. Then persons can come into the ministry and partner with us and provide package deals for them to set up the entire home before they turn the key and put everything in place. We actually have a, a viewer's question for you, Minister. Mm -hmm. What are the mandatory requirements for first-time home ownership? If you're able to answer that well, question. Well, mandatory, it, it just depends on, first of all, the bracket, the approval bracket, the approval rating, what you will fall in as a first-time home owner. So you should go to a bank, a financer of your choice, and get your pre-approval, pre-assessment done. You take your job letter, you take your identification, and obviously, if there are any other debts owing, you'd also advise of that. So they can calculate, based on your debt ratio, how much you'd be able to afford in a mortgage. And most of the financial agencies try to make it affordable so that you also still retain um, disposable income to remain into your home to take care of regular bills like paying rev for their euro services or you know electricity <laughs> <laughs> i'm not saying that 
saying it's not affordable. I'm just saying that we normally yeah. try to make sure you have disposable income. Absolutely. So the price point that you get from the mortgage, um, the financer, is to facilitate you being yeah. able to make your mortgage payments monthly. Make it as realistic And then as also afford to live and survive. Yeah. So you just bring that information into housing. You apply, and sometimes persons would say exactly where they wish to have a home. So if they know that we're creating subdivisions, now we're doing Pinecrest and Carmichael, then some persons are saying, well, I want to live in Pinecrest. And some are saying, well, I want to live in Carmichael. And so we're working towards getting them um, approved to get one of those homes. And that's that's the easy way. Excellent. I want to just correct the number for um, yes. viewers out there that may want to be. No, no, you, you go ahead. I, I said 677 uh, 677 would be the number to call for an Eero. Brandon, I actually have a question for you from a viewer. Um, the question is, can Arawak Homes complete your home for you if you started building on your own property? Absolutely. Yeah, so the process is already, it's already underway. Absolutely. Maybe I got it the bell course, That's right. foundation. That's can right. you guys step and help me and assist me to complete that and get in my home? Absolutely. And, if, and go one step further. If you have a property and want to start construction, we can help you with that. So whether that's a home, duplex, or whatever the case may be. Now, through our rock, you would save thousands and thousands of dollars because our rock homes, look, we, we have a plans already designed. Mm -hmm. And if someone comes in and picks it and says, I like it, cool. If someone says, hey, I was watching HDTV last night and I want this in my room, no problem. We have architects on staff. You're not flexible. No problem at all. <laughs> so we have architects on staff who, free of charge, will design the home as you see fit. Yeah. The first step that we do, though, is always take people to step one. And I'll tell you a story. We had a customer, I won't say where the home is, but about mine is a customer came in, they started a home, took it up to Belt. They came in and we went, we always start with step one, even if you go up to Belt or wherever you are, hey, how much money can we get for you from the banks? Because at the end of the day, that determines everything. Yeah. I don't care what you started, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. does, would the bank lend you the money to finish it? Correct. And so we always go to step one. Now, in this particular case, the person started a home was like 4,000 square feet. And it was like, look, the bank will lend you enough money to finish like 2,000 of this. So what our architect did was we went out, the architect went out, said, listen, we could do 2,000 if we do X, Y, and Z. And we finished 2,000 of it and, and did, did, left the home in a way in which, look, when you finish it, you could get the rest. And so at the end of the day, wherever this, wherever it is, if, if it means putting people in position to finish all, great. If it means you can finish a portion, whatever yeah. it takes, at the end of the day, look, this is what the bank said they could lend you. So let's try to get you something yeah. in there for that. And I feel like the minister and you are saying pretty much the same thing. You, you mm -hmm. have to be realistic yeah, and, and generally live within your means. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important thing to keep in your house long term, right? Yeah. Otherwise, Mark my have you on TikTok. <laughs> 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 so, 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 man, I have, a, I have a question for you. I, I know you do have a lot of social media engagement. You know, you talk about technology. You are incorporating technology a great deal in what you do and, and transforming, you know, the, your real estate offering. Are you seeing a lot of uptake? Is that, is that something that, that the millennials and, and other persons are engaging in and actually using it as a vehicle to lead to home ownership or, or property purchase? Absolutely, absolutely. The reception has been extremely warm and, and you'd be surprised, you know, uh, TikTok, uh, namely TikTok, uh, has a stigma of being an, a young child's uh, social media platform. Uh, but, but you know, throughout the day, if I didn't silence my phone, I'm sure I would have gotten let's a couple put, of let's calls. Let's put Dwayne to the test. Dwayne, you on TikTok? No. <laughs> See? Same. <laughs> okay. You got to get rid of Dwayne. Look, look at him. You got to get rid of See, he said it for discuss. You were discussing the voice. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but I, you know, you'd be surprised by the amount of older folks who said someone forwarded the video. And I think that's, that's why TikTok, uh, is a little bit more shareable than other platforms, right? It has the, the share buttons built into it. And so someone could share a video that they saw over any social media and very easily WhatsApp, uh, to someone who yeah. might be interested in home ownership. And so the reception has been extremely warm. Yeah. One, one thing I really appreciate, I said it before about, about your videos is that it, you, you, you take you know, virtual tour. Yeah. You, you take people you real realistically through you're not just trying to catch right. the perfect the perfect angle you right. literally go through every part of that home yeah. right 
I saw that when we ran straight around the point. That, right. That was, it looked like you did like a mile or <laughs> what was big. Was yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fran, I have another question for you from a viewer. Um, if somebody wanted to get started today, what's the first step they would take? What's the first thing they do to engage our rock homes with um, home ownership? Um, we have three offices, one in Carmichael, Shirley Street, and one in JFK. Honestly, the first thing is just to call. You could go and uh, we have, uh, you just come into office even if you wish. Um, at the end of the day, the main thing is to get started on the journey. We have been at this for a little while, and the main thing is first to take that first step. You people will be surprised at the amount of people I've met who, after you meet the first time and say you all could do this, they say, "Wow!" And I'll also point out that to the women out there, listen to my brothers. Sometimes, look here, ain't nothing changed from primary school. We didn't like getting burst then, and we didn't like getting <laughs> burst now. So you see sometimes a woman would come in and they would answer all the questions, like, what's your salary? They doing all the talking. Until it gets to a point where you say, okay, listen, this is possible. As soon as at that point, then all of a sudden, <clears throat> now hold on, you say, what? <laughs> we could do this? Okay, so what do we have to do? And that's, so sometimes, even in the house, sometimes, uh, someone told me once, sometimes in Route 2 and 4 is Route 2 and Bout. Mm. So sometimes one person in the party may be like, let's go do this. And yep. someone be yep. dragging their feet, what's going on? So some people might say, hey, take the lead. Let me, I went in and they said, this could happen for us. Okay. And then bring someone else in. So at the end of the day, it's possible. Just get the information. And then once you get the information, we could create a pathway yep. for you to do it. First thing is contacting you guys. And that, you'll basically hold their hands through the process, we, however long and whatever is necessary. That's the goal. Yeah. Very, very good. Very good. Dwayne, I wanted to um, jump back to you, right? What are some of the improvements and the you know capacity capacity growing that Rev has done on its network over the last year? I know I know the network was put to yeah. the test, and it's not unique to Rev. It was all, most internet service providers around the world because of the pandemic. What are some of the, the steps that we've taken recently? Well, one of the main things is just resiliency. So we have um, we have a call system in the province. We got a call system in GB. We just did a major upgrade last night on our, on our call switches. Uh, we've done a lot of training. From March of 2020 until now, we've basically invested millions of dollars to make it better. We've also laid a lot of fiber, as you know. Um, Abaco is completely rebuilt. It's a historian. You know, we never went down at Abaco. And now what we're doing in Abaco. That was a lifesaver for many people. It was. And Abaco and Grand Bahama, many we, never, we never, ever went down. You know, that's for the brave young Bahamian engineers that we have. Yeah. We now have five to the home in Abaco, as you know. So we're no longer using the copper network. We have resiliency to all the towels in Abaco where we buried the fiber. So now we are better protected. In New Providence, what we're doing, as you know, is that in a lot of the areas we have upgraded or added additional fiber capacity. So there's nowhere in the Bahamas or nowhere in New Providence in particular that you cannot get quality RAB service. Mind you, we're not perfect, but we know we are better than our competitors. So if you have a problem, just call us and we could definitely fix any issue you have. Don't mind, don't mind the marketing about the speed. That's only in certain areas. We give you the same consistent speed over the entire new province. But we have a surprise coming very oh. soon. Very soon. You can't, you can't the, announce it now. We got, we got the audience. Yeah. <laughs> they got to stay tuned. Yeah. They got to stay tuned. I, I, but, I, you know, and I know Rev is, is constantly innovating. We're constantly growing. evolving. It, constantly really, evolving. Just, don't believe the hype. Our speed is consistent in every community within New Providence. Yeah. We don't say we have this and only offer it here. We offer you the same consistent service right now in every community in the Bahamas. Yeah, that's excellent. I think we want to identify a few winners. I think we, we would have um, had two winners of the one month free Rev service. Not sure if we have their names. Yes, we do. We have Chantel Mackey. Oh, sorry. This is actually, she, this, this, this is one of the, the bigger prizes. She got a free appraisal and discount le uh, legal services from One Oak Bahamas. Nice. Chantel right. Mackey, right. congratulations. Will she thank be you on for TikTok? tuning in. Will she be on TikTok? I show everybody on TikTok. <laughs> and then we all, now this one, this one is really special to me because we have the one-on-one -on -one consultation nice. with the Minister of Transportation How and Housing. One -on -one? Congratulations, <laughs> Sir Jakira Pinda. Are you, is, is that over lunch? Are you taking them to lunch? And I'm like, yeah. I'm gonna do a nice treat for that. Oh, no, that's awesome. Yeah, Wish gonna, I could pick I'm your brain one on one for about an <laughs> <laughs> So congratulations to both of our, our, our prize winners. Very excited by that. So we're going to go to a quick commercial break and we'll be back to continue the discussion. My name is Linda Hughes and I've been a rev supervisor for 
over generations. Arrow has transformed the way I connect with the relationship between me and my son. I've had issues with him going online, using his devices during class time. So I've been able to go into the app and shut down the devices so he can focus more on his schoolwork. I've also been able to schedule cutoff times before school, on school nights before classes and cut back on in time for virtual. I have a pretty big home, so Arrow has a, a mesh system which allows me to extend the reach of the service throughout the whole home. I, I'm pretty sure my neighbors uh, also connect to my devices. Sign up or upgrade to Rev Trio Plus for only $129 per month and improve your in-home Wi-Fi coverage with Eero and transform the way you connect. Rev, you and us together. Got wireless dead zones at your house? How about endless buffering? Where you put the Wi-Fi password again? This is Arrow. Arrow is not just a new Wi-Fi router. Rev customers get the first Wi-Fi system that covers every inch of your beautiful home. Improving home coverage, higher speeds, high performance, and connectivity for up to 75 simultaneous devices. Aero. So why is you streaming your favorite show on HBO Max? Aero with Rev gives you the freedom to stay connected while you work, learn, and play at home. Never think about Wi-Fi again with Aero from Rev. Visit rev.bs slash Aero or call 601-8992 to make your Wi-Fi wishes come true. Mom, mom, the internet isn't working. Can we go outside on the basketball court, please? No, I told you to go and do your homework. Looks like your mom controls the way you connect on and off the cord. And that's the power of Eero. Sign up or upgrade to Rev Trio Plus for only $129 per month for your chance to win an all-expense paid trip to the 2022 NBA League playoffs. Call 601-8992 and transform the way you game on and off the court. Only with Rev, the home of sports. Welcome back to the Connected Home discussion. Matt, we're going to jump right in with you. We have a question, actually, from the audience. Uh, does a smart home increase my, my does, does, a, does a smart home increase the value of my home or property? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, the, the number could vary um, depending on how much additions you've made. Yep. Um, but it definitely has, has ROI potential for, for a resale. Yeah. And someone like yourself who's seen, obviously, a lot of properties, a lot of homes, can you kind of give us a rundown of one of the most connected homes that you've probably been in and some of the features that mm -hmm. they, it may have had? Yeah. So there's a home in Ocean Club um, that has that essentially been sold. Uh, but again, you know, just like Dwayne mentioned, AC is connected, being able to monitor the home, uh, not being there roll up shades, digital, right? Uh, so that you could uh, have them open up at a certain time in the morning. Uh, and so instead of an alarm, the sun greets you, right? Um, uh, I haven't seen this uh, Samsung TV with the, with the full digital display. I've seen it um, uh, online, but yeah, those kind of features, warm the pool, uh, uh, open the shades, uh, turn and off and on the lights, all of that digitally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Fran, uh, having a smart home, it doesn't have much to do with the size of the home, the location of the home, not even the cost of the home. And that's the beautiful thing about what a smart home, in particular what Rev is offering to the Bahamian people. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter where your home is. There's two things that everyone have in common. The key to getting your home and the fact that you could have these services in your home. Yeah. The, the reality is, even if you don't get it all at once, yeah. you, once, once you say, hey, listen, this is where I want to end up, you go piece by piece. And so uh, I don't work at Rev, mind you, but I'm telling you the fact of the matter is the potential of a home today is different than it was yeah. 10 or 15 yeah. years ago. At the end of the day, Rev could help people understand the full potential of their home. Yeah. 
and the connectivity that uh, offers those additional comfort, whether it be security, or as Matt pointed out, hey, things like uh, shutters or the lights in your home or different things. And lights, for example, would rev offers, with, uh, cable offers as well, the smart lights. For example, if you have a smart light in your home and you have it, let's say, to the road, right? When you come in home at night, you could turn that light on, or even if you're not home, and you don't want your house to be in darkness yeah. and everyone to drive past and be like, nobody home. Very important for security. You, you could yeah. turn on your light from your phone. And so at the end of the day, is someone home? Isn't someone home? No, no one can tell because the light's coming on and off. Mm -hmm. And so you could do that from your home. That's just one example of how the home today is different than it was five years ago even. Mm -hmm. Actually, oh, Brandon works great for it. You said <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't leave that alone. <laughs> I got to do it. I, got an act I actually have a, a specific question for you from the audience, right? I'll read it. Does IROC homes uh, have technology packages or security solutions, for example, running Ethernet wiring outlets in areas that will provide power um, to wireless cameras and other devices? That's a great question. And to the point being, um, our rock truly was, became truly invested and dedicated in the smart home about two, in 2000, end of 2019. And uh, for us, the main thing was we came back on a mission. We went uh, to the largest trade show uh, conference in the world, saw what was going on. And we said, look, our people need this. And so we came back on a mission and God works in his own way. And I say that because we came back on a mission and then the next thing we know, Cable Bahamas is like, hey, we're going on this path as well. And it was like, well, you know what? This is a partnership made in heaven because at the end of the day, look, we build the homes, et cetera. We can provide all the provisions yeah. for it. But hey, my Wi-Fi isn't working. Don't call our Wi-Fi. That that's not really our forte. Mm -hmm. Let the experts deal with that. And so our job is to make sure the home is, has everything it needs to receive what they want to give you. Yeah. And once we do that, then Rev could come in and say, hey, this is how we could really make your home, turn your home inside out, yeah. in particular with the Eero, which as the, well, I'm one of the three people, three or four people you mentioned have it in their home. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, look, it's so simple. You have literally one or two sockets in your home and you're good to go. Mm -hmm. And so in terms of the infrastructure, it isn't even what it used to be where if you want a camera system in your home, someone has to come and run wires all through your home. They got to start drilling all in, into your box and to put all these things up. At the end of the day, you could literally two, two plug, two sockets and you're connected. And that's just one aspect of it, how, what the experts like Cable Bahamas could bring to the table and, for you. And speaking of Rev and Cable Bahamas, Dwayne, if my existing home, right? Because this is, this is not, smart home is not only relative to new construction. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. If I have an existing home, I, I don't know, I don't want to say the opposite of smart, but just say my home, <laughs> my home is smart right now, do it. Okay? Right. Can I part the word Rev to uh, change that? and create my smart home experience. The age of your home doesn't make a difference. I've been in my home 21 years and it's still on cutting edge. Um, before I was employed with Rev, I was always on Rev. So the broadband services of Rev is what gives you the services that you need. Like Francis say, when I built, I, because I was a techie guy, I put in ethernet connections and drops in my home, but you don't have to do it anymore, right? But if you have a two story, there's a strong possibility that you will, you may have an issue with coverage. And we encourage you to probably run an ethernet cable on the second level of your home, and then plug in the era device. So there may be an opportunity. And depending on how construction was back then, you know, trying to tie the first floor into the second <laughs> floor, or you could get caught, you could get um, uh, Ethernet cable, you could run outside on the box and then come inside and go from there. So the age of your home has absolutely nothing to do with being smart. You can make any home a smart home, as long as there's a plug and it has the broadband services from Rev, you're good to go. Stable broadband service, Stable that's broadband, the key. Yep. Broadband services. Okay. Excellent. So Minister, we have a question from you, yeah. right? Um, are, are you guys, are, is the government, are you uh, from your chair, are you looking at providing affordable housing and homes in other islands, particularly to the, to the um, viewer question, Andres? Oh, yes. Yeah. It's funny that that question came because some of my colleagues are also um, I'm coming at me. When are you? When are you coming <laughs> to Andres? When are you coming here? When are you coming? Yeah. But um, the intent for the government through our blueprint is not only to do the affordable housing but also we've put in a portion called home sweet home that's another policy that also would align with the interests that young professionals have 
Matt spoke to it earlier about having that other income, having that investment property. And we know how much the Airbnb market is picking up. And so whilst in Providence, it's um, strictly for first time homeowners because in Providence it's just very congested and a lot of persons still are not homeowners. And so it's just strictly first time homeowners, but in the family islands, it'll be a partnership with first time homeowners or second time homeowners that is interested in entering the Airbnb market. And so that's why the focus yep. is definitely going to be on the family islands as well as what Excellent. we're doing here. Excellent. And uh, Matt, I want to speak to something that the minister just brought up about New Providence being congested, right? Uh, when we fly over, Sometimes you'd be like, well, what is that? I mean, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. What, 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 what is that misconception? Is it congested? Is, is New Providence yeah. congested? Or is some of this swamp land? Or some of this is yeah. just land that we, we could never really build on? So we can't consider it, although it looks green from the sky right. <laughs> when you fly it over. Yeah, yeah, I, I have the same, same thought when I fly over as well. And I think uh, the government is still holding a considerable amount of crown land, right? right. Um, so let's, let's acknowledge that uh, at the start. But also some private owners as well. Uh, you know, you know, we think about our, our parents and more even so our grandparents. They're the kind of people, they ain't into selling land, yeah. right? If I own it, I will own it for life yeah. and generations to come. We're, we're yeah. trying to flip. But yeah. they, 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And, so, and so I think that that is what those two dynamics are, uh, government land and private owners that are holding on to their real estate investments. And we do see some of these properties where we see these very large walls I mean, they run for hundreds of feet along the road and go back another hundred mm -hmm. feet and just push. What, what is that about? I mean, it, it, well, I don't, maybe, maybe this is a question for the minister is, uh, do, 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 does the government have the leverage to uh, engage these individuals, like Matt said, who are sit, who's sitting on really large acreages and say, hey, I mean, maybe it's time to do something with this. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, the government do have the leverage, but I think it also ties into your development plan uh -huh. and how, what is our plan and our outlook for the future, yeah. how we want to design New Providence. If we continue to put so much focus on people living, building, and occupying New Providence, yeah. which is only 21 by 7, might I add, um, then we would have issue with trying to advance and grow other economies that are outside of New Providence on the family islands. So where you have those things um, marked off with wall and so have you, yes, the government do have laws where you can take them back. Um, but what we've been trying to do is engage persons on some of the inventory that's available to me through housing. Yes, the government owns Crown land, but housing only has a number of acres that's considered my inventory to use. Otherwise, I have to go to um, OPM, to the pri prime minister and get Crown, or to private realtors and purchase land from them. And so that's kind of the exercise we'll be taking on as well. Okay, good. Brian, and I wanna get back to construction, like in smart homes. Are, are the measures that you take and things that you consider to future-proof your home as you start to think about the design and the construction that maybe things we would not have considered 20 years ago from the ground up? Absolutely, absolutely. And so at the end of the day, um, what you want to look at is the home in its totality and uh, the things that we pointed through in terms of look, how signals will bounce through the home, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so those are things that we look at now, the things that we wouldn't have looked at, like I said, like even And I don't, want to, be I don't want to be chopping into my wall. Like I want nice, no, exactly. nicely hidden, provisions exactly. made, exactly. for the internet cable and exactly. that sort of stuff. Exactly. And things even changed even more since COVID because what, in the past, it was like, okay, uh, room would need this much sockets and this kind of thing. COVID came, and next thing you know, everyone has to be home doing remote. People had to do home working. Mm -hmm. So the need for sockets and everything else and everything else just, like, changed. Mm -hmm. Because kids are home for working virtually, so they need their space and everything. And so everything now has to be looked on the basis of, hey, there's almost like pre-COVID and after post-COVID. Mm -hmm. I mean, not post to the end, but about my sense COVID. And so at the end of the day, even that now is continuing to evolve. Hey, you know, people need, hey, what if we get locked down again? And what if my two, three, or couple of kids got to be home doing school again, and we need this system, and I have to be home doing some work and stuff. And so at the end of the day, workspaces and the design, how a home is used, the functionality of a home is completely, it's still evolving yeah. and it's still evolving today. Um, but we are each step of the way, looking to look, respond to our designs and say, look, throw it out. Um, 
this can't work anymore. And if for whom is more of an open setting where people could sit, for example, like at a counter behind Absolutely. us and say, okay, well, listen, I can get my laptop and sit here and do some stuff and while you're over there. And so these are things that we continue to incorporate day by day in our designs. Uh -huh. yeah. Good, good. I, um, and Duane, I have a quick question for you. Sure. We're taking it back to Eero, right? Which uh -huh. is really a transformative device. What are some of the built-in features, security features of the Eero? Uh, a couple of things. Once you log into the app, it shows you who else connected, show the type speed. You can block devices on the network. You can add devices on the network. Um, and of course, with most devices, you can monitor what websites they go to. You can also block websites as well. So you still get the full um, security features as well. Can I, can I cut my son's internet off to a direct, uh, you know, particular device at a particular time? Because well, it's, it's hard getting right. them off the computer to it. Well, you can, if I could just press a button and that's it, yeah. you can go to bed. Well, actually, all devices now, all modern devices now has a shut up feature, yeah. right? But if you can't figure it out, you can log into the Eero app, look at this device, and then basically um, disconnect internet from there. So you can control it as well. Too. <laughs> very, very right. powerful feature also, for parents. Yeah, also, if, you have that sun, if you have that one room where they use it, they're consuming more bandwidth than the rest of the house, yeah. you can also go in there and control the access as well, too. Excellent. I think we have a few more winners. So we want to jump into that and right. see who they are and what they've won. So we have a winner of a Rev Smart Home Package and Euro device, Latoya Simmons. Congratulations. Our team will be contacting you for sure. Thank you so much for tuning in. Whoa. Wow. Oh, okay. So wow. this package is worth $7,500 towards wow. the closing costs nice. of your home That's and huge. lot That's really package. Good. Wow. $7,500. Yeah, exactly. To Egbert Mullings. Yeah. Egbert Mullings, congratulations. That's that's awesome. And that's actually courtesy of Arawak Homes. Wow. From, I think you'll, you'll, you can expect a call soon. <laughs> <laughs> Egbert, Egbert, ready to get started. Yeah. <laughs> we open at nine, Brother Mullings. We open at nine. We open at nine. We'll be right there waiting yeah. for you. Give me the 859. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Fran and I, I, I want to jump into something that's relative to the $7,500, right? It's a nice segue. Part of the challenge for a lot of particularly first time homeowners mm -hmm. is that is the, the deposit, mm -hmm. the down payment. Mm -hmm. What are some of, some of the tips or some of the things that you've seen that can help persons realistically get there? Mm -hmm. It's a huge mm -hmm. barrier of entry for Absolutely. so many behaviors. Absolutely. Yeah. As a matter of fact, that is uh, probably the number, well, that is probably the number two uh, barrier to entry to get in a home, but that's very high on the list. And so when you look at the down payment and closing costs, when you go into a bank, that's where a lot of people get intimidated. Yeah. And once they go into a bank and they uh -huh. hear the combined figure, oh man, they push a panic button. It's yeah. like, well, I ain't gonna get that. So, and they walk out the door. Uh -huh. um, the first thing when people come into office is we try to help people understand, look, let's break this thing down. And we break it down with down payment and closing costs. And so when we look at the down payment, at the end of the day, you, we have different programs for those people who need to get there. And so it's all about creating pathways. It's all about creating pathways. I had a customer I'll never forget. I'm not gonna call their name, um, but uh, they, uh, when we started the process, we went to pay them, what's your salary, what's your loans? I said, well, how much do you have saved? Got down to that point. And I said, you know, any ASUS or anything like that? She says, oh, including ASUS? Yeah, she said, well, nothing. <laughs> I, said, <laughs> I said, okay, okay, all right, okay, no problem. So we, we created a pathway, and at the end of it, you'd be amazed where, listen, mm -hmm. let's do like an ACE to a saving ACE yeah. and you break it down. Don't look at the whole figure, we could get there. Mm -hmm. But let's start, let's see how much you could save every week, let's see the, uh, whatever pathway you could get there, and we could get there. There are other people who, hey, look here, we're doing it, mommy, auntie, or someone may throw a couple of dollars our way too. Mm -hmm. We have a program, like a bridal registry program, we call matrimony. So for people who are getting married, it works just like how a bridal registry would work. The only difference is people put money and it could go to either the upgrades to your home or your down payment or closing costs. And so for some people who are getting married, you've seen where, hey, Gordy so-and-so come in and they put a couple of dollars more than this one or that one. Auntie come in and put a little couple of dollars more. But at the end of the day, it's a village. And so we have different pathways. And so once people come in, the main thing is, look, don't, don't, don't let any experience that you would have had stop you from the rest of your life from trying to move forward. Mm -hmm. We are here to help you. And once you come in, our goal is to say, hey, look, what pathway can we help you to get on your pathway to own own home? 
And that's what, that's what it's now all you, about. Now, you mentioned that was number two. Yes. So you, you know, you peak all of our key Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> what is the number one entry, uh, barrier of entry for home ownership that you've Honestly, experienced in the business? The number journey? one reason why a lot of payments cannot own their home today is consumer debt. Because mm -hmm. consumer debt. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, when they come into our office, it's like, I want a home. Okay, great. You get into it with your salary, and the top yeah. line is looking good. Salary is there. Oh, yeah, this is looking good so far. How old are you? Hey, man, look, we got some years left to pay for this. This is looking good. Um, even you go to savings. Okay, you got a couple of dollars saved. Okay, that's looking good. Do you owe any money, especially if you work for government? Now, a lot of people watching this now, they're going to put that same Eero turn this thing off right now. But at the end of the day, <laughs> if you work for government, the reality is, look, you have to be aware of the fact that you have a target on your back uh -huh. yeah. and that you are the you are people wake up in the morning and their goal is to say, look, how could I get this person to get this loan mm -hmm. or extend a loan or get more money? That's the goal. They wake up and you are sleeping and they'll do it. I'll tell a quick story. Um, my mother used to work, be a civil servant. And when she was home on Sunday, my parents, the phone rang, my father answered and he said, uh, hello. He said, hello, is Sharon Wilson there? They didn't ask for Franklin Wilson. He was a civil servant. He said, okay, Sharon Wilson passed on the phone, passed the phone. Sharon Wilson, yeah, congratulations. You were approved for a five thousand dollar loan. You could come tomorrow and get it. She said, well, no, thank you so much. I don't want a five thousand dollar loan. I'm like, all right, well, I had to tell you that you approved for ten thousand dollars too if you want that. No, okay, well, that's all right. Thank you so much. Do you want a credit card? You can come get that first thing in the morning. Just come sign a salary reduction mm -hmm. slip. Mm -hmm. And she said, no, thank you very much. Now, please understand, my, at that point, my mother did not have a banking relationship with that institution. She was a civil servant. That person called her at home. That's all they needed. No, no it wasn't need. That person had her number. So I say that to say, when I tell people, look, you are a target and people wake up and go to bed thinking, how are they going to get you? They are literally working to see how they can entice you to borrow that money. And please understand their goal and your goal, home ownership, they're dying on the same street. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. they, they going down one road and you going down the next. You trying to get one way and they won't take you another way. So when I say the number one reason, it literally is in a lot of people control. And for those people who are watching who, hey, look, they know where they are and things have maybe have gotten out of control in that department, still come into our, because at the end of the day, it may be a case of, hey, look, at, let's see how we could try, what's the best pathway for you to consolidate, pay off some of these loans, the best strategy to help you get to home ownership. It don't matter where you are in the race. If the starting line is here, you could be all the way back there, not even to the starting line yet. Mm -hmm. You may have to get yeah. to work just to get you to the starting line, mm -hmm. but let's start you on a path to put you on a way to be like, hey, let's get one step at a time and get you where you need to go. Excellent. So the main thing I want to help people understand is, look, it's not impossible. It may take longer, but it's still possible. And whatever situation you got yourself in, so you start, the really start the process. Make, make contact. Thank you. So we just want to just go around the table real quick and just do some, some just final words, closing remarks before we wrap up on here. Uh, Minister, I would like to ask you, what, where would you like to see the housing market to go in the Bahamas five, 10, even 20 years from now? Well, I think that there's a new modern way of living um, that's creeping into the market for persons. It's not just being single family homeowners but persons also look for the multifamily. And so what we're trying to do within um, the housing department now is provide other options, living options for persons and build those options to make uh, it even more affordable. Outside of that, we've been looking at programs that are offered around the world, New Zealand, Singapore, UK, that allows um, almost similar to a rent to own or an um, uh, ASU sort of program where persons pay into an uh, escrow account and they build up their down payment and then they become a homeowner and they build equity. And so they enter into a mortgage or if they live in the property and they pay in as if they're renting mm -hmm. to build up that equity, to build up that down payment. And so what I want to see is more options being offered through the government's program that gives that particular bracket of society that can generally walk into a bank and get a mortgage and become a homeowner, an option to become a homeowner or an option to have a second investment into their country that they can feel proud of. So expanding the reach, modernizing the approach and just making affordable 
truly affordable with different options. Creating more realistic access. Yeah, realistic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Matt, any closing remarks for yeah. the viewers? I, I, it was such great uh, commentary today. I think uh, Fran hit the nail on the head, but start the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, you know, oftentimes, and we find this, you know, when people are in arrears, they, they try to avoid conversation at all costs. Yeah. And, and I think um, for people that are looking to own real estate, you have to get in touch and start building a network of people who are experts in industry. Our Rock Homes and even our company, One Oak Bahamas, we specialize in helping people through the process. And once you've had the conversation, like Fran said, it's almost like a light switch that goes off. Yeah. And it starts that race towards home ownership. And so I would suggest either reaching out to Fran or, or my own company to have that conversation. Mm -hmm. Um, and learn about real estate. It's hard to be, you know, I, I, one of the things that I've been advocating for is that, is that this younger demographic has such big ambitions. And if we have big ambitions, one thing to appreciate is that no person has become, or very few people have become millionaires and very, very successful people without learning about real estate. And so if you plan to be uber successful, you need to start learning about real estate today. Just quickly, I would want to remind our viewers out there that some of the products and the services you've seen, the Eero, the Speed, some of the speeds that Dwayne was talking about, you can get through Rev Trio from uh, just calling in 601-8992. You can get up to 100 megabits per second in terms of speed, 190 channels to watch, and unlimited voice calls. So call in 801-8992 to Rev. Brennan. I know you just want them to call you, but besides that, <laughs> <laughs> any final parting words for us? Well, you know, you said something earlier where the down payment and closing costs are one of the biggest challenges to help, right? We have a winner tonight of the prize of $7,500 towards the closing sure. costs. That's one person we look forward to seeing them, meeting them tomorrow. $7,500, that's the deal. Farrell, we're going to take that one step further tonight. We're going to oh. take that one step further. Wow. That person who won tonight will receive $10,000. Yo! The second they file, secondly. We still, y'all still watching? Yeah, all right, all right, all right. All right. Secondly, I know some other winners. Wait, we coming to you next. That, that, no pressure. You better, tell, you better tell us that's the prize. That, 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 in addition to that person, today is Tuesday. Anybody who called by close a business on Friday, who want a house in our package from our rock homes and get $7,500 towards their closing costs. Hold on, man. What? What, what do you start what? Here, <laughs> you, trying, you trying to break the internet, this, runner? This is, this is serious about home ownership. Can we goosebumps, man? Matt, listen to me. This is home ownership is serious. The winner, we're going to watch that up. And anyone by close of business on Friday, we close 530. If you call before 530 on Friday and you qualify for home, you'll get $7,500. Nine o'clock in the morning. 859. You got to say the number again. Say the number. What's the number? What's the number? Man, listen, you just look on the NTP on Facebook. Go on Facebook. <laughs> find our rock homes. All the numbers there and all that stuff. Yeah. Go on our website, wow. all that stuff. At the wow. end of the day, Huge. a person, the winner tonight, will go from 7,500 to 10. And anyone who call our rock homes for a house and lot package and before 530 on Friday and qualify, We'll get seven thousand five hundred towards the closing cost. Wow! I want to know how y'all phone lines can be tomorrow morning. That's all I. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you can get another yeah. three yeah. lines. Yeah. No, that, that is that That's is awesome. an incredible offer. It shows the sincerity and dedication that yeah. you and mm -hmm. your family have mm -hmm. been with developing That's homes in the Bahamas, mm -hmm. quality homes mm -hmm. in the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. We've had a long relationship. I've known you a very long That's time. Right. Yep. Yeah. Y'all don't yeah. got corners. Y'all never did. Yeah. Yeah. This is awesome, Brian. Yeah. You changed your lives. Thank yeah. you so much. That's what it's about. Thank That's you so much. That's what it's about. Dwayne, hey. let's make sure we partner with them with all the homes. Try to just get yourself involved with please, OK? <laughs> make sure they have rev service. Yeah, well, you know, we, we just we really, really touch the tip of the iceberg on smart homes, right? Um, I know Alive and Rev now combined stores. So if they go to our KBB store, they can see some of the technologies we have for smart homes. Um, you know, and also the Harbor Bay store as well, too. They see some of it. But I stand behind a product that I support, that my team and I support. And I can say, hard stand, like I said, we may have one or two minor glitches, but we are by far the best connected service provider in the country. And we'd be happy to prove that to you at any given time. Yeah. Even the even when you look at the 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 alive rep store, like we had an outage today, and 
automatically the star went from fiber over to the LTE. So you got from rev straight to live. So as one company, we're able to, brought, to provide any product that you want. And if you're doing a subdivision, Rev could do that. We could put in the fiber connection for you, the fiber to the home. We could put in telephone systems. We could do everything. One-stop shop. You don't have to go anywhere else. Rev and Cable Bahamas is indeed the leader in connected lifestyles. We, are. we definitely are. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to all of our viewers out there. This was very informative. I learned a lot from these experts, and I hope we were able to maybe change uh, some lives out there. I know Fran and May may be doing that soon. And, but, but most importantly, informing the, the public in two very important areas, home ownership and technology. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much.